Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to a brand new class of Ephesians chapter 6, Walking in the Light and Fighting the Darkness. And yes, yes, it's an apparition. He's here. He's usually back there. But I'm brother Jorge is joining me. What? I was like, I'm not an apparition. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to add the effect later on. I'm going to magically appear. <laughs> he's going to magically appear. But today he's joining me because we're going to talk about a very, uh, you know, very um, easable, very easy to talk topic about, you know, parents and children. Mm -hmm. So today we're dealing with that. Usually he's sitting in the back. Always. If you hear, if you hear a, vo a distant voice correcting me about every word that I say wrong, it's him. <laughs> so that's, that's him. That's Brother Jorge for you. So let us begin with section A, the spirit-filled life and two other special areas of submission. Now, if you remember, we were talking about being spirit-filled, but in marriage. We were, were talking about this, but just, just, to, just to let you know, this is a small continuation. It's a continuation from that letter of, of Ephesians chapter 5, but now Paul is going to lead us to a different topic. Now he's going to talk parents to children, and other two areas of submission that we're going to talk about. But first, uh, Brother Jorge, if you can read chapter 6, but verses 1 to 3. Sure. Uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Now, we all have heard that before. We yeah. lived mm -hmm. through it before. So let's get into it. So the spirit-filled life and the parent-child relationship. Okay? Children, obey your parents. That's tough. It, it's tough even for adults. <laughs> well, I mean, in the Spanish one, <laughs> yeah. I, was re I was reading this. Mm -hmm. and you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my dad is in the Spanish <laughs> and <laughs> he was delighting himself. <laughs> he was having a joy. You know, but eventually we got, we got through it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, a, it's a command. The mm -hmm. command is simple. Children are to obey their parents. Yeah, and that's... We could go with biblical reason, but even in a practical reason. Yeah. You should listen to your parents because one thing that I learned is... Um, my parents always caught me in lies. They knew when I was lying. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's probably the same with you. Yeah, right? yeah, and, yeah. But I'm, it's... We were lying to protect ourselves, but our parents didn't want us to lie because they can actually help us through that situation. Yeah, yeah. We should obey them in the manner of speaking in a practical manner because they want the best for us in most cases. Yeah, in most cases they want the best for us. But, you know, if we're going the, bad, the wrong way, mm -hmm. they're going to say, hey, you're going the wrong way, but we think it's the right way. Mm -hmm. So it's always, you know, it also depends on culture. Yeah. You know, culture, different, different parents in different cultures have different parenting styles. Yeah, and um, we're both from the Mexican, Mexi culture, Mexican culture and respect and obedience is something that is... Yeah. Drilled into it's us. Drill, yes. <laughs> it has to be. Yes. It's drilled into us. But um, even then, like, there's different forms of respect. You see, like, the Japanese respect their parents throughout their lives. Yeah. They, they have to take care of them throughout the yes. entire life and yes. honor them even after death. Yes. <laughs> that's, that, that's something, that's something that, that not a lot of cultures do. Mm -hmm. You know, it, whether it's the Chinese culture, all the Asian mm -hmm. cultures, they respect those people that are actually mm -hmm. dead. And they revere them. You know, so it's, some, it's something to, to hold. This is not, it, this does not mean that children have the responsibility to obey, but parents have the responsibility to teach their children obedience. It's one of the most important jobs as a parent. And, and we know this. Yeah. You know, we, we know this. It's been drilled into us that mm. we need to obey. But it's also the parent's job to teach obedience. It's not, you know, oh, we come out of the womb and we automatically obey. Yeah, it, it's not as simple as that. Yeah, I wish I could say it was. Yeah, it's not. Even at an older age, you're like, sometimes you don't want to listen no, no, to but, cause well, you. Technically, hu the human being is, is composed or designed in the sinful nature, if, we, if, we're, if well, we're applying yeah. that, to rebel. Mm -hmm. So we're always trying to rebel against the authority, uh, the authority, authority. of the parents. So or any authority. Or any authority <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> See what happened last year. Anyway, <laughs> because you don't like a decision. Anyway, we're not going to enter that. But... We are designed to rebel. Mm -hmm. You know, it's simple. You know, God said, 
if, if we're applying, you know, mm-hmm. uh, what we learned in, in on Sunday, yeah. you know, you can take this, you can get from this tree, but not from that tree. Yeah. But what happened? You know, lies come in. Another influential voice comes mm-hmm. in, and you rebel. Yeah, and it also falls on on influences too. And in the Bible, it even says, um, "Everything is permitted, but not everything is right." Right. And that's the reality of it. Like God lets us choose. Right. And you know, He wants us to obey, but He doesn't force us to obey. And it's the same thing with our parents. Yeah. That parents want us to obey, yeah. but. Forcing not, us sometimes not, might be a bad thing. Yeah, but they, they don't... It depends on the type of force that they're using. Mm-hmm. Because we have we have seen cases that when they're disciplining their children, mm-hmm. and we're going to enter that a little bit a little bit later on, I mean, they it can get out of hand. It can. And um, it's a fine... It's almost become a fine line of how, how you should discipline Especially nowadays? Yeah. Especially nowadays, many children have actually, like you know, used the police, used law mm. enforcement against their parents. Yeah, and it, there's a fine line, and things have changed a lot in the last 20 years. Yes. And so, um, but it's not to say that the, a lot of children believe, or kids believe, or, or young people believe that our parents are sometimes tyrants in that manner. <laughs> <laughs> in the we, thought about, of we thought about that once. Yeah. We, we thought about it, we, that... We, they always, you know, the orders, the commands, mm, the, the but discipline. we didn't understood, we didn't understand the meaning behind it. Right. And in the, as you get older, like we have, we realize it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't for a bad reason. It was so you can actually become a better person right. in, right. in the long run. Right. That's clearly it. So again, we, we're talking about the disobedience, mm-hmm. you know, it's an inherited sin, an inclination from Adam. But obedience must be taught. That's why you have a lot of parents who are nowadays who are having a hard time with their children to like they, they can't obey mm-hmm. because of whether they're not teaching them discipline or or obedience whatsoever. And it's also that fear of like making like hurting your child almost. Also, yeah, because yeah. sometimes that lack of discipline is like. If I do this, maybe I can cause some problem with the child right. later on in, right. in the future. And it, there is, like I said, there is a fine line, but we have to understand that sometimes that discipline is needed because the child will learn more in the, in the long run. It'd be like, yeah. it's kind of like this. Um, and the example I have is my sister. My mom always told her. Don't put the fork inside the, the socket or oh you're going to get electrocuted. And she did? And at one point she did and then she learned she okay. did, that yeah. that negative reinforcement made her right. learn right. to like, never do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like putting your hand on the fire. Exactly. Don't put it there. And that's, and that's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with disciplining your child. There's different types mm-hmm. of how to discipline your child. And there's also different times as exactly. to when to discipline your child. Exactly. And not a lot of people understand that. They're like, oh, he did you know, mm-hmm. okay, sometimes using force, using, you know, brute strength mm-hmm. on your child at sometimes is good, but don't use it excessively, not with a excessive strength or don't yeah. get too aggressive because you don't, you never know where that trauma, mm-hmm. if you get out of line, like you said, mm-hmm. if that goes beyond, yeah. you can actually damage your child. Yeah. And you, you could see that with kids, yeah. but we could also see it with animals also like in the think about it yeah when you discipline the dog so much whenever you raise your hand even though you're gonna pet the dog it'll be be afraid afraid. yeah so you don't want that your child to be afraid of you Mm -hmm. even though even though for some cultures that's good Mm -hmm. for you but you don't want that you want to have that parent child relationship that you become friends you want a mutual respect exactly each other and obviously like you respect your child privacy or whatever mm-hmm. they will respect your authority yeah because you're not overstepping like the parents have the ability to overstep their their right because it is your you're the child but that's right mm-hmm. but you know you give them a little bit of leeway and they'll be more inclined to accept your authority mm-hmm. ba- that's basically it is essential that a parent teaches the child obedience so that the child will grow up knowing how to obey god even when he doesn't understand everything or doesn't want to. 
yeah and we all go through that like we i always push the limits of <laughs> essentially i was like a raptor pushing testing the weaknesses basically basically, <laughs> basically everybody tends to like okay i'm gonna cross the line i'm gonna you know rattle your chain yeah. a little bit you know trying to test how much you can mm -hmm. go but it, it also applies you know that if we learn obedience from a you know a visual mm -hmm. a visual meaning your parents you can learn obedience how to obey god as well yeah you know so basically parents are basically that role model that 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 par parent child relationship that we need also as children of god because he is our father and he is you know expecting us to obey him mm -hmm. because if we don't obey we're still because obedience mm -hmm. and disobedience is sin if we're not obeying that is a sin so Technically, we need to obey our celestial father. Yeah, and just like you want to obey your regular parents. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's basically what it comes to. So this is what all parents' discipline for a child must come to. Disobedience must be punished so that obedience can be learned. Mm -hmm. So again, that negative reinforcement that, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to put the fork in the, in the socket <laughs> and I'm going to learn like mm -hmm. that. It... it and the way my sister learned was probably the worst way possible because it was like she yeah, actually yeah. got hurt. <laughs> right. And my mom told her, no, do that. And she went ahead and did it. And you, and that's how you get punished. And that's the same thing with, with just in sin in general with God is yeah. like there is a consequence for there, that, for your sin. There's a consequence for every sin uh, that you make or that you do. For example, if, you know, it, 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 every addiction... Mm -hmm. Leads you, it leads you because you make that choice. Yeah, you decided to get into that. You decided to disobey. You decided to not listen. You decided to t make it your own. Yeah. Basically, you make that addiction your own mm -hmm. when you are submerged into it a lot more. Yeah, and you don't know that you're in sin and you're being separated from God as much as you go. So disobedience must be punished. Mm -hmm. And if you don't repent, then your disobedience, your your punishment will be rewarded in the lake of fire. You will go to hell. However, the parent and child relationship should model our, also our, our relationship with God. Yeah. It should be like that too. You know, every time that we sin, there's a consequence. Every time that we sin, we must, thanks be to God that we don't have to be punished because we're, we were condemned. Yeah, uh, but we have an access. Yeah, and like you oh, said, the, the yeah. whole the whole consequence thing is like when you lie, you lie. You sometimes feel this guilt. Yeah, and yeah, and and that guilt kind of eats you up at your feelings, and you start feeling horrible. It's yeah, like that's it, true. And, and the reality is that's a way of punishment, so to speak. Yeah, your, mi your mind punishes yourself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's basically it. <laughs> In the Lord, this is right. The apostle gives us two reasons for the child to obey the parent. First, they are to obey in the Lord. Plain and simple. You need to obey as unto the Lord. We've always listened to that phrase, but you never, we never know what that, mm -hmm. what that does entail, what does that mean. But you need to obey in the Lord, meaning in Him. Not by Him, but in Him. Right? This means that their obedience is part of their Christian a obedience in a similar way of the wife's command to submit to her husband as to the Lord that which we already gone through it in 19 classes yeah <laughs> that was a lot I know but you guys hang in there so the second reason is because it is simply right mm -hmm. there's no other way to put it yeah um, and you know some parents obedience goes a bit too far oh yeah yeah, it, it goes too far. Like, it comes to the point that the child can't make their own decisions. Yeah, and and that's the reality of it. Like, like you said in the Spanish class, you're like the parent wants you to go through a certain career or a certain path and everything. They want to live their life through you. Yeah, they, the, the, what what they couldn't accomplish, they want to live it through you. It's through proxy that they yeah. they see yeah. the success. Yeah, and. I can't really say that I've ever lived that because my, I never wanted to be an accountant. I yeah. hate a, I, I'll put it this way. I didn't want to be an accountant because 
that's three generations of accountants. <laughs> my great grandfather, my grandfather, my dad. They were all accountants, and I'm all like, I'm done with this. But you became it, an accountant. Yeah, I, I ended up becoming an accountant, not because my dad wanted me. Yeah. Actually, he's like, he only told me about accounting because he's like, you're good at this. This is something that you might be good at. Right. But I support you in any way because I started in psychology and ended up in, in accounting in accounting, eventually. Yeah. But that's the thing. Sometimes the parents are like, you have to become a doctor. You have to become, um, you have to become president yeah. of a whatever, uh, uh, whatever, whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. And, you know, those kids struggle with a lot of issues because they're like, I have to, they, they sense that. They need try to, to meet the expectation. They meet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They try to meet the expectation and obey what their parents want. Yeah. And that eventually hurts them internally because it's like because they come they, they become controlled mm -hmm. they're basically controlled by their parents yeah like meaning you the parent wants to live the life that he couldn't have or he couldn't achieve those goals that he couldn't through the son mm -hmm. however or through the daughter, daughter it's either it's either or but they're actually not letting the child live mm -hmm. so it might be you know that the style that we're talking about here the obedience mm -hmm. is right but not into the point that that the parent wants to indulge or drill into yeah. them their own their own dreams right. and desires. They have to grow up. Mm -hmm. They they maybe they you didn't like accounting at first, mm -mm. but eventually it became something like oh I can do this. Yeah, and right? that's honestly how it became. Like I can do this, and you start to like it yourself. Yeah, I, it wasn't pushed on me because if there's something that always happened to me is like. It's like when teachers are like, you have to read this book. Right. Trust me, I'm not going to read that yeah. book. The more you tell me you, that you have to, you're not, we're not going to. Yeah. But, I mean, if you didn't read the book, it, it will affect your grade. It does. So it brings a consequence. It, there's, there's consequences. But yeah. it's like, you ha like I said, the fine line of, of obedience comes down to how you want them to obey. Right. You, you don't want them to obey, uh, you know, reluctantly you mm -hmm. want them to obey full-heartedly to to respect your decision and your rights because if a if a child starts disrespecting the the ideas of the parents because they're too strict or whatever it could lead to disaster in the end yeah. like it's not necessarily going to happen for sure but it can lead to it there's a lot of there's a lot more rebellion there's a yeah, lot more yeah. um testing of boundaries or whatever it may be yeah but uh, or to spite your parents you do something because right. you don't want to make them and sometimes, but sometimes we don't understand the parents point of view yeah if they're strict it's for a reason yeah you know and luckily you are able to remember as you grow mm -hmm. oh they were strict on this for a certain reason mm -hmm. and when you encounter a same, the same situation you're gonna like oh yeah no and that's the thing we have to as children and as yeah maybe future parents you have to communicate with your child and learn communication to is key because if Very you don't key. yeah you may think the child from when it was 10 years old like like playing baseball but at 16 he's probably more into basketball or yeah. whatever it is yeah. and you're trying to and you know there's a lack of relationship there we have to have a good relationship both parent and child because in the future it is possible that the child is going to have to take care of the parent. Um, yeah, and there might be a resentment towards it, Ex and it ends up not taking care of the parent. Exactly. The parent might suffer, or the child might suffer, or whatever yeah. the ca case may be, that you have to have a good relationship with your kids, because if not, that lack of communication leads to a lot of issues that can... A lot of negative outcomes. Yeah. Basically. Uh, what it means to honor our father and mother may change... As we grow into adulthood, but the principle always endures. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep that commandment, because as one of the Ten Commandments, you need to keep that because it's one. Uh, as as the scripture goes on, it's one that can, has or holds a promise, mm -hmm. right? So the adult child does not owe the parent obedience, but they do owe the parent honor. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Now, you want you can disobey or obey all you want, but you have to honor your parent. Yeah, uh, in the end of the day, you have to honor your parent. And that's something that I lived with. Like, I wasn't born in a, in a Christian family, right. mm -hmm. 
but I always had to be like, I have to honor my parents in the best way possible. That yeah. To bring my parents in the best light possible because I am a reflection of them. And right. that's the same thing with us. We are a reflection of the church and of, of God. God. Yeah, of God. Of God. So Basically, uh, again, from, from a standpoint that you, you weren't born, in like, let's say, in a Christian church. I was born in a, in a Christian mm -hmm. home. I was born in a Christian home. And that, and that to honor was very difficult for me because... You know, I didn't understand mm -hmm. the meaning of it until you grow up, mm -hmm. you, you get, you know, you get biblical, you get indulged with Bible and, and everything and you see it, mm -hmm. you know, and after and it took a long time for me to understand the definition of how to honor your parent until you lose one. Yeah. For me, it's a, it, it became something so, uh, you know, in, 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 it, it was so uh, like it, it was in passing and then. Yeah. It, to me, it, became, it, it got drilled in my head and in my heart that, you know, I didn't, I, I'm like, did I honor mm -hmm. as much a, as I wanted to? But now it, it's like I did, but now I'm honoring more. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm honoring the parent who I have left mm -hmm. and I'm respecting the parent who I have left. Mm -hmm. And God has, you know, if I can be real, God has graced me. God has, uh, you know, mm -hmm. God, God has given my, my, my father uh, a, a wife mm -hmm. uh, for him to not be alone. And I, and I kid you not, and this, this will help for all those people who are going through a certain situation like that. You have to honor. Yeah. I mean, Even though she's not my mother, biological mother, she's not my mother, I have to honor. And honor, honor, honor someone who's helping, helping me you know, who's, who's uh, trying, trying to, to be of help to me in a way. Mm -hmm. So I must honor mm -hmm. because if, if she, uh, she's married to my father, that becomes, she becomes technically politically my stepmom. Yeah. But I must honor those people who are trying to help me mm -hmm. all of the time. I'm try and, and, and not only the parents, honor those people that are always there for you. Mm -hmm. Be thankful. Honor is also be thankful for those people that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. Be thankful for your parents. Be thankful for your your bosses. Be thank because they. You, mm -hmm. you know, be thankful for every certain person who has who is an influence in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you grow up, you know we have to teach this to the children to honor, be thankful. That's you know that's very important. But when you grow up, when you are in your 30s or your mid 30s or even in your 40s and you still have your parents with you don't forget that they're still they're, there's they're a very valuable mm -hmm. they have honor you're supposed to honor them and respect them just as they're respected right and one thing that was always ingrained in me and it's probably some part of our culture is no le faltes respecto a alguien never oh, yeah. give disrespect don't anyone. disrespect anybody yeah because that was one thing that er like my parents drilled in me. Don't disrespect anyone. And it's the reality is yeah. you don't disrespect them. You don't disrespect your parents. They're not going to disrespect you. They're going to go right for yeah, you. Yeah, the golden rule, no? Yeah. Yeah. The, the don't do harm on two. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do what they don't, want. Don't, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Just don't. And that respect, when it becomes mutual, is beneficiary to both parties. In right. reality, it's not. And... I've seen it with my parents. It's not that they don't respect their parents, but they had a difficult childhood. Yeah. And that res it's a re different type of respect. Yeah, because when you show respect, even though you have, you know, you can have a son who has a resentment towards mm -hmm. his father and he doesn't show him respect. And, the li and if, that fa if that son has a son, he's going to see all of that. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do exactly what the father does like in, in the Spanish class, remember the, the, mm -hmm. the little, the small story that, you know, the little kid went to grab the, you, the, the blanket from mm -hmm. the grandfather and gave it to the father because the, the father put his grandfather out of the street mm -hmm. and gave him a blanket. So the little kid did the same thing, but he gave it to the father and said, when I grow up and you grow old, I'm going to do this exactly the same thing. And then that's why you see a lot of family ties breaking. So folks says this, when the bonds of family life break up, when respect for parents fail, the community becomes uh, decadent. Exactly. Decadent and will not live long. So, 
That's what building a community is all mm-hmm. about. Respect. Yeah. Obedience. Res- respect. Honor. Um, uh-huh. Uh huh. What's it called? Loyalty is something else. That's a different. That's part. a different. That's a different. But thing. respect and honoring each of the people around you is very important. If you respect everyone around you, yeah, there shouldn't be any issue with anyone else. Right. And yes, there's a lot of like polarity now in the world. And a lot of people don't respect each other's opinions or whatever it may right. be. But, you know, if you respect someone else's opinion without having your two cents in there, you, there's less conflict. Exactly. So bas- basically, the first commandment with a promise is that. Paul reinforces the idea with a reference to Deut- Deuteronomy 5.16, <laughs> where God promised to bless the obedient child. Christians have normally divided the Ten Commandments into first, the first four direct towards God and the last six directed towards the fellow man. But the Jews divided the commandments into two sets of five, seeing that the law to honor your mother and father more as a duty towards God than a duty towards man. And that's because of culture. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're always being thankful to God for that. Mm-hmm. So let us go to verse five, verse four, and we'll, we'll end on this, on this, on this slide. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Yeah. Th- this one, this one, it goes far beyond as well. How parents walk in the light, not provoking their child to wrath. Do not provoke your child to wrath. <laughs> parents certainly have the opportunity to provoke their child to wrath. Through an unkind or overcritical attitude that torments their child instead of training them. But Christian parents should never be like this. Yeah, and we just talked about it. We just talked about it. We just talked, we touched it a little bit. It's over embellishing your kid, and the reality is the reason why a child will react more in their emotions towards their parents is because there is a love towards them. And the person that's hurting you is the person that, lo- exactly. that you love. Exactly. And that's, that's very, it, it affects you in so many ways. It affects, could affect you angrily. Yeah. It could, yeah. Depression. It could be, lead to anyway. so many yeah. ways. And that's the reality is anyone that love that you love and they disrespect you or they hurt, harm you in any way, you're going to feel hurt. Yeah. In one way or another. Yeah, it, it sometimes it, it, it's painful when you don't think that, for example, us as sons, when we think that we're not hurting our, our fathers, and we see, I've seen this and, and, and I've gone through it, when you think that you're not disrespecting him by an action that you did, but it was a total, it, it, in general, you disrespected him. Mm hmm. You can see that I got to see this. My father, one, just one time, I, I saw him. And he's just with his head down after I left. I, I knocked myself in the room and everything. And after I, I got out, I saw him just with his head down. Because I knew, you know, and, and we all see this. And this is exactly, he was disappointed. Because I did, I did something to disrespect him. Mm-hmm. Bec- and I thought I wasn't disrespecting. I thought I was holding my position. Mm-hmm. But when I saw that, I was like, I am such, I- I'm very dumb. Mm-hmm. I didn't think about this. And on- on- honestly, I went and I-, I, forg- I asked for forgiveness to my dad. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm, I- I'm sorry for my attitude. I'm not going to do this again. I'm sorry the- for the way I acted. You were right. I was wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, and that is exactly how God sees it too. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't take us to to wrath. He doesn't make us angry. We get angry at ourselves, but he does, or we get angry at him at points, but he never takes us to to be angry. No. And sometimes we think that our parents, that parents, uh, if we're talking about young people, our parents are leading us to, to, Mm. to, to be, uh, to be angry all the time. And it's not that. It's, It's because they don't want us to suffer. They don't want us to go in a, in, a, in a different route that they know that if we take it, we're going to be lost. Mm-hmm. And that is exactly how God sees it. Every time we disrespect Him or every time we sin against Him, He's like that father sitting down by himself reflecting. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it gets to me at times that we always take that for granted. 
Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have we sinned towards God? How many times have we failed Him and we never go back to and, and, and ask for forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Because we think, oh no, he, He's just going to forget about it. No, He doesn't forget about it. He forgets about, he forgets about it when you go and ask for forgiveness. That's exactly you know, how I did that. I went to my, towards my father and said, forgive me. I, don't, I, I wasn't thinking you were right. I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And that for me was like, it relieved me. Yeah. So sometimes and parents do take you out to wrath. They, they make you angry. But you have to understand that if you, get, if you allow to yourself to get angry, then you're, you're the one failing, not your, your yeah. parents. But it's also for the parents, do not make your children angry. Yeah, and that's why I said harm from someone that you love is way worse than yeah. anyone else. It's yeah. like if a person on the street like harms you, harms you, you're not going to be gonna see him again. like you're going to be mad, but you're not you're it's going to you're going to forget about it yeah. later on. But if you're if someone harms you that you love, it'll stick with you. And that's the whole thing of like boyfriend and girlfriend, a girlfriend does something to you, you're yeah. It, 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 it hurts. It, it, that story it hurts goes on yeah. for <laughs> it hurts you. Yeah, <laughs> it goes on forever. But, but you know, that's that's how it works. Like our emotions carry us through this, and we trust our parents not to harm us. And when it happens, and the same thing when vice our, versa, yeah. vice versa, mm -hmm. it happens. We have to be ready to apologize. Yeah, or or, forgive. or or forgive. Yeah, or forgive. Because yeah. it goes both ways. Yeah, uh, yeah. And even, and even though you didn't make anything, do anything wrong, but they, they, they you know, got overexcited a little bit and they went off of you, just say, hey, I understand how you feel and I forgive you. Mm -hmm. Even though it wasn't your fault. Yeah. And they will, they will come to, it, it will come to like, okay, I'm sorry, son, or I'm sorry, daughter. I didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just talking things up. Yeah. But I'm very glad we, we're, we're just finishing our first class, okay? <laughs> but... Thank you for joining us today. Remember that we have a men's breakfast on the 26th. And uh, I don't see it here. Oh, there it is. On the 26th, we have our men's breakfast at 9 a.m. Don't also, uh, We also have our uh, youth night, our Friday night live that we're going to be chosen. We're going to be chosen. We're going to be uh, uh, displaying the uh, episode six of The Chosen. So all young people, please come out. We're going to have a good time. We're also, we also have our Women to Women chat at 7 on that Friday. And also our, our, our Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. Uh, we've been dealing with a very, very uh, controversial... Yeah, it's, it's almost like right now. Almost like right now. A very helpful topic for the church, uh, emotional and mental health. And so you don't want to miss it. We, we, uh, we're here in person at 10 a.m. and also... Uh, through uh, through the internet, we also put uh, transmit it live. So, thank you, Jorge, for joining me today, and may God bless you. Stay safe, and I'll see you here next week. God bless.